Hello and welcome back to Riseworks. This is episode 8 of Getting Started with Attributes and Bobs inside Houdini. And in this lesson, we will see how to create and control copies of our boxes using the Bobs node on the scattered points and maybe even grow kind of like the effect of growing CT that we are currently seeing on the screen. So without further ado, let's get started and let's create this effect. So as per usual, we press the tab, start typing geometry, and we start with a grid uh, because we will scatter our points on a grid. So immediately after that, I will drop the scatter node. And as you can see, yep, we created some points. Relaxed iterations will be a little bit less because as previously we have seen, we will be scattering our boxes. So a bit of random position might be good to achieve the look sort of like a city. Next up, logically, we'll be creating a box and copy to points. So when we copy to points, required geometry will be box and target points will be our scatter. In if I enable this, we immediately see some kind of a weird results. So uh, I will decrease the uh, uniform scale of our box. And now it's time that we talk about controlling the scale inside our attributes and bobs. So what exactly is going on? So as you can see, when we copy two points, in our case, it's just a box, and we go from scatter to copy to points, as you can see, the attributes from target to be copied is a lot of different, well, attributes is like N, up, B, scale, scale, orient, rods, everything else. So. What we are interested in right now is two of them, the P scale and scale. So what's the difference? Now, usually the P scale is used to uniformly scale things as if uh, it was like just points or sphere or particle. So let's see if we create a sphere. And by the way, in this case, I will create the sphere and we'll leave it as a primitive. And you can see it's just the primitive sphere that is just being represented by one sphere, as it says. So if I now copy it on our copy to points and make it slightly better, as you can see, we just have the spheres. And if we increase or decrease the uniform scale of the uh, sphere, you can see, well, basically it does what it says. However, how do we control it? So previously discussed, the copy to point inherits the attributes from the scatter. And so as you might have already guessed, we will drop an attribute pop that will run on the points that will control the P scale. So we go inside, and as you can see, there is no such um, inputs of our processing of our attributes. So we have to create this. So as we discussed previously, it will be done by bind export. And this will be called P scale. And it's a float because it just, uh, you know, controls what we have. And indeed, if we create a constant, or indeed we just promote parameter, right? And we go outside, as you can see. If we just control this parameter, we are multiplying the initial actual uniform scale, which in our case, let's say 0.5, we are controlling it using the P scale. And of course, if we were to have some random numbers based on, let's say, noise, in our case, why not use the NC alias noise? So we connect the position into position and we get the noise into the input. And as you can see, we have the 3D input, but 1D noise, uh, meaning it will be just a float. So now controlling the noise or 3D offset of the noise, we can see that we indeed randomize everything that we have in the scale using the noise and we have this effect. So this is P scale and it works best on the Uniform scaling, especially so on spheres. But 
uh, we want to create our boxes and we want our boxes to scale non-uniformly. So what do we do about that? So in our case, I'll delete this and that. In our case, we will get another noise. In our case, I think turbulent noise will be fine because uh, it can be 3D noise, meaning it doesn't uh, result in just the float, it will be a vector. So we connect P to position and the noise will go into the bind export. In our case, it will be scale. And scale will not be just a float, but a three float. Let's see what we have. And indeed, as you can see, immediately something started happening. If we make our box a little bit bigger, we go back to our attribute pop. You can see if we tweak our noise, we have different effects on our geometry. So if we make our box a little bit more higher from the get-go, and if we merge it with our initial grid, so we have some kind of floor to work with, as you can see, we have this kind of effect going on as if it was uh, creating or generating some sort of a city. So I suppose in this case, we could use a little bit more of roughness because it's a bit too uniform to my taste and make the box slightly sl smaller. So we kind of have this effect of as if it was sort of like streets and whatnot. So there you go. We non-uniformly scale, as you can see, it, it has different scale in the z-axis, in the y-axis, in the x-axis. Obviously, if you go to the attribute VOP and you divide the vector to three floats, you can control different aspects of the scaling. You can control just x, just y, and just z. And it will, you know, uh, multiply the the scaling non-uniformly, but just in one axis that you will need to control. So this was scaling, p-scaling. Remember, p-scale is a float, and it usually works on uniform, and scale is a three float, or in our case, vector, and you can indeed use vector. And to make the best use of it, you have to use the 3D noise, which will result in a vector result. So hopefully this makes sense. I try to, you know, <laughs> uh, make it more or less digestible for you guys. Uh, play with this setup. If, as per usual, if you don't really get what you're doing, um, the best way to do this is to create slightly different setups. Maybe tweak a little bit uh, inputs, outputs, that might help. So good luck with that. Um, don't be afraid to, you know, uh, create different noises, like instead of alligator, maybe original pearly noise or pearly noise. And by the way, this is inverted because this noise um, gets the inverted. When um, this noise generates negative values, so whenever you scale negative, the normals get inverted. This is why it kind of looks, <laughs> uh, it kind of looks like blue stuff. So, you know, uh, to make it, uh, Recomputing normals will not uh, fix it because the normals are fine. Uh, what will fix it, it's making the noise into the absolute. Let's actually do this. And there you go. We can, uh, absolute converts all the negative into positive. So if you had um, different values like negative 0.5, negative 0.3, uh, 0.5 and 0.8, it will convert the negative 0.5 and negative 0.3 into positive 0.5 and 0.3. So absolute makes everything negative into positive. So the normals will not get inverted. So that's a little bonus for you. <laughs> um, and there you go. There you go. So play with this setup. As you can see, it's kind of uh, really gives you interesting results. Obviously, if you uh, connect it to the box and let's see with scatter, it's actually not on the grid, but on the box. You could have this structure that actually looks mm, kind of pretty interesting, to be honest with you guys. It does look pretty interesting. So there you go. Uh, you can kind of start to think about how to, how would you create your own, I don't know, Death Star or any other 
a procedural system or like cyberpunk mega structure, what have you. So this is it. And uh, as per usual, if you have comments, suggestions or ideas, don't hesitate to leave comments in the comment section below. I try to read them all and maybe answer all your questions if the question is needed or if I can answer them in the first place, obviously. So there is that. And uh, hope you liked it. If you like what you see, press the like button. If you don't want to miss anything else, press the subscribe button. And as per usual, thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll see you in the next videos. Have a nice day and goodbye.